All righty then. All right. So we're going to talk about creative nature and prayer. Seems like I've been gone forever. I mean, as far as being up here and, you know, sharing what I think I know. <laughs> Which changes daily. So, I know, God always laughs. So here's the thing about creative nature that I think that I talk about a lot, and I don't know about you, I forget. I forget that this human stuff, my bones, my body, whatever you want to call it, is just a container. It is just a container. That there is a part of me that I absolutely believe and own that has always been, always will be, and is right here and right now. Call it your soul, you can call it the thing itself. Ernie called it it. So whatever that thing is, it is my connection not only to all of you, it is my connection to something so much bigger than all of us. And so what we tend to forget is, we're always creating. And so when I was in, I went to Vegas for a weekend to a mastermind experience, and I learned some really great things. And, and most of the, the things that I learned what? Cats! <laughs> oh my god! Cats! 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 Okay. Okay, so, Deanna, you wanted to know what a squirrel moment was? That is it. Cat moment. Cat moment. I thought that I saw you this morning at a coffee shop and I thought, is that the girl I saw this morning? Is that really cat? Thank you so much for being here. Sorry, I'll get back on. So that's that creative wisdom. I thought about Kat this morning, and holy moly, there she is. And look how I manifested. How powerful is that? So what I know to be true is, and I shared with the, this with the practitioners because I think it's really important that we remember this. How we do anything is how we do everything. And all weekend long, when I was in Las Vegas, they kept reminding us of that. Because I believe, I don't know about you guys, I get lazy. I'm not really engaged some of the time. What would it really look like if I woke up every single morning and thought, wow, I am a powerful being because I'm God informed. And I seized every moment of every day from that place. What would our world look like if we really got that? Really, honestly embraced that? And so some of you may think, well, yeah, and what does that have to do with prayer? <laughs> so what I believe is, yes, there is conscious prayer. And then there is the prayer we're doing all the time. And it's called our life. And so what I, uh, I'm taking a class, a mastery class with a group of um, ministers. And Reverend Kathy Ann Lewis is teaching it. She's got real pearls. And she's an Emma Curtis Hopkins um, follower. And if you don't know, Emma is the teacher of all teachers. Ernest went to school under Emma. And Emma... Is, is as amazing as Ernest, in my opinion. The, the difference is sometimes Emma actually tells you how to do things. Ernest was so brilliant, he just thought we were all going to get this. He really did. He thought, well, if I get it, then obviously you're going to get it. And, and sometimes I'm like, well, well, how do I do that? And so one of the things that we are learning is if my life, regardless of what it looks like right here today, does everybody have one thing in their life they're like, ew, that's just not pretty. Yeah. Yeah. One thing, I kind of know about you guys if I wasn't holding a mic, yeah, I could do both hands. <laughs> what if you raised and praised what is? Because you absolutely know you co-created that with God. What if you really, instead of saying on those really ugly things, oh, that's, you know, the economy, oh, you know, I, 
I kicked a bad boyfriend, that's why that happened, or you know, whatever it is in your life that you want to shift, instead of making it about everything out there, what if you really raised and praised, oh, thank you, God, for allowing me to struggle with my finances for so long. <laughs> Obviously, there is a part of me that is a little thick-headed around my finances. Thank you for allowing me to move through that. Because trust me, my struggles around finances are my creation. I know that. I get that. And I never raised and praised the fact that, oh, yes, I'm a mighty, mighty manifester. I bring it in and spend it quicker than probably you can blink sometimes. And so it's, what is it for me to do to shift that? Because I manifest a lot of financial good in my life. I just haven't been very mindful about where it goes. And so it is really whatever that is in your life, whatever it looks like, can you raise and praise it? Because we are creative. And we created it somehow in our life. And sometimes that is so difficult to grasp onto and to really go, huh, all right, well, could I not, maybe, you know, could that one belong to somebody else, anybody? Somebody else step up with that one. No, because the truth is if God's creating through me with all the good stuff in my life, guess where God's creating through me also? Because what we believe is the universe is all good, it's all God, and it says one thing. Yes. 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 That's what it says. It doesn't say, oh, you know, Gail, <laughs> just thinking, maybe you don't want to marry that particular person. <laughs> it tried to tell me that. I'm not talking about Paul, you all know that. <laughs> you know, we have those moments, do we not? We have those moments where there's something inside of us, that still small voice from within that's like, hello, <laughs> no. You know, we just talk louder. We act more crazy. We move faster so we don't have to hear it. And so it was interesting because um, Robbie and I have this expanding prosperity consciousness group, which is fabulous. Yay, give it up for the prosperity consciousness. Yeah. Yes. How you do one thing? What? Uh, come on. I'm telling you, Las Vegas was, they had it. If we didn't stand up out of our chair, yelling at the top of our lungs, they made us sit back down, and that's what he'd say. How you do one thing yeah. is how you do everything. Robbie's been to multiple ones, so she knows. And so um, Leslie Slavin posted on our closed group a video of a guy that gave a TEDx talk. And what I found fascinating about his TEDx talk was that it is exactly what we teach here. However, what he did, because he's a psychologist, is he ran tests on this theory. So he's got five steps. Five things you do every single day for 21 days straight, and you will create a different world that you live in around you. It cannot be the same. Bless you. There's Kleenex right under the chair, sweetheart. <laughs> so, five things. Number one, and this is for 21 days straight, write these down, watch the video, because I'm going to ask you to do them all with me. We're going to start tomorrow. Number one, list three gratitudes. And you know what, I'll also send this out in, the, on a, in an email. List three, because some people don't have pens, so I apologize for that. List three gratitudes. Make them different every day. Every single day, you get up and you list three things you're grateful for. Not on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Not on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Every single day. 21 days straight. This is where I think we all fall off the wagon. We all think, oh, well, you know, it's kind of like a complaint-free world. If you miss a day, reset your clock. 
This is, this is changing your thinking at a cellular level, down to the core, your subconscious mind. That's why you need the 21 days. Three gratitudes every single day. Is that new to anybody sitting here? No. no. Except we forget. Second, journal. Now this is what I found out about journaling. You write out every day something that really happened in your life. It could be the day before, so you're journaling about the day before. An amazing thing that happened in your life. The day before. Because what you're telling your body is, amazing things are happening to me all the time. All the time. And when you journal it, you're reliving that experience. And when you relive the experience, the, your body's saying, more please, more please, bring that into my life. So another great tool, and, I, and again, I shared this with the practitioners that I learned in Vegas, is we do great things every single day. Mm -hmm. Every single day. We are constantly doing great things, and we are so quick that we do a great thing and we just move on. I said to the practitioners, if you get up and meditate, Every single day, that is a great thing because you know how many people don't do that? If you get up tomorrow morning and do three, three gratitudes and you start this 21-day process, that is a great thing. So here's what I want you to do. And this may seem silly. I don't care. Do you want to shift or do you not? You pat yourself on the back 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then... Do a happy dance. <laughs> we all have them. And it seems silly. But how we do anything is how we do everything. And we are caught up in not being the best we can be. I don't know if it's out of fear. I don't know if it's out of the life we've led. We forget we're God expressing. And I don't think, maybe, I don't know, it just says yes, but really, is it walking around going, oh, life is so hard? <laughs> I don't think so. That energy itself is the one constant energy. And that one constant energy is joy and love and compassion. That's all it knows. Everything else, really human. Really, really human. And so you say your three gratitudes, you write in your journal about it, an experience you had, so your body will go, oh, okay, I like that, let's do it again today. And then, oh my God, really, number three is exercise. <laughs> okay. Maya's got that down because she's walking 30,000 steps a day in Gilbert. <laughs> exercise, you know why? Because you're telling your soul, this container is important to me. Because I get what it houses. This container is important. So I am going to exercise because I want this container to be healthy. So exercise. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You know if you're exercising or if you're not. Right now, I'm not. I know that. I can say, oh, I run up and down the stairs and, you know, no. Exercise is mindfully saying, you know what, today I'm going to go on a three-mile walk. I, you know, I've got DVDs of the kazoo that I could exercise to. They just need to get out of their little holders and into the DVD player. <laughs> exercise. It's absolutely important that we exercise. Meditation is the fourth one. And you know what he said about meditating? It stops our ADHD reaction to the world. We are so busy doing what's next. Oh my God, I don't have enough time. How many of you say that? Oh my God, there's not enough time. I don't have enough time. Time's an illusion. We have all the time we want. What's important? And what if you really took time, and it doesn't have to be 30 minutes sitting cross-legged, cross staring at a candle. 
What if you just took five minutes, if you don't meditate right now, what if you just took five minutes to sit in silence? Just sit. Let your mind say, oh, this is so uncomfortable. I don't know why Gail's got me doing this. Is this the 21st day yet? I don't like this. Because that's what's going to happen if you don't meditate. Five minutes is going to seem like a lifetime. Have you, did you have see E Pray Love? I loved it when Elizabeth, Elizabeth uh, I was going to do her name, when Julia Roberts, it, it, well, but Julia Roberts was playing her. When she was sitting there meditating and she looked over because she thought she'd been there for days and she'd been there a minute. <laughs> One minute can seem like a lifetime when you're asking your body to do something new. Meditate. It allows your mind to go, oh, I don't have to be busy. Really? I don't have to be busy. In this moment, I can just relax. And then every single day, perform <coughs> some kind of random act of kindness. Now his example was easy. You send off an email to somebody to tell them how much they mean to you in your life. Every single day. You go to the grocery store, you look the clerk in the eye and say, wow, thank you so much for being here. Good, well then you got this covered. Random acts of kindness. He swears, and he's a psychologist, Ernest Holmes taught this since the beginning of time. So did Emma. So, you know, there's so many people out there, probably the ancient wisdom people also, I don't know that they were running around making crazy like we do, who knows, maybe. <laughs> and still, we forget. So, starting tomorrow, three gratitudes. Three things you're grateful for. And for 21 days, when you go back and read them, make them different every single day. I'm so grateful I live in Santa Fe. Well, I am too. You get to say it once. <laughs> Two, journal, and it doesn't have to be long and lengthy. Write out something fabulous that happened to you. So your body actually goes, oh, wow. That was kind of fun. Let's do that again today. Let's have fun again today. I forget. Exercise. Exercise. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no wonder I forgot. Of course I did. Darn it. Exercise. Tell this container that holds God, oh, I am so glad you're here. I am so glad that you move with grace and ease. So absolutely exercise, meditate. It doesn't have to be for a long period of time. Just sit by yourself without your computer, without your telephone, without music, without anything at all except you and the air you breathe. Just sit. Set a timer, because five minutes will seem probably like a lifetime. Maybe not. Some of you I know are avid meditators, and you're going to think, five minutes, I could do that. No. Heartbeat, good. And some people may, like me with exercise, go, whoa, five minutes? So do it for five minutes. <coughs> and then do a random act of kindness every single day. Any, all the time. So Harriet wants to know, when do I pat myself on the back? And do a dance. Do that happy dance. So let's say women or guys, you just got a great deal on a piece of clothing. I don't know why clothing's in my mind. You got to, you know, you've got, oh my goodness sake. I had no idea that was going to be on sale. I don't care if you're standing in the middle of Chico's. <laughs> Pat yourself on the back 10 times and do a little happy dance. Wow, I walked into this store, I found the perfect piece of clothing to make me feel good about my life. Now, let's see how many of us will do this daily. 
because it's a practice. And for most of you, you could post your gratitudes either on Everyday Center for Spiritual Living on, the, um, on Facebook, or you can do it, we have a members only one, and you can do it there. Or you can keep it quiet and just do it for yourself. However, I encourage you, find a buddy. Find somebody that's going to say once a day, so, did you do those things? Because we are creative. We are absolutely creative. We are creating with God all the time. And if we want to shift our world, we have to shift our reality. It is one person at a time. And it's a tribe. It is absolutely all of us. How will Santa Fe be different if each one of us does this for 21 days straight? I don't know. And we won't know unless we absolutely commit. I was going to say try. And Yoda says there's no try, there's just do. So let's do this together as a community. Make a commitment, not to me, not to somebody sitting next to you. Make a commitment to yourself that you want to change your reality. You want to change how you are in the world. Because that's where the difference happens. We do it together, and we do it one person at a time. Namaste. Namaste.